Hello drone racers. Today we're going to take a look at some updates and some options for soft mounting your lizard. If you saw my previous soft mounting video, you'll know that I considered it pretty much essential. It made a humongous difference and I use these O-rings in order to do that. I use these because I could get them that day and I didn't want to wait. I had ordered both these, the foam soft mounts. Actually, I hadn't. I think someone in that video recommended these, so I got ordered those to try. But I had ordered these silicone mounts, which aren't technically made for this size motor. So in this video, we're going to take a look and see which of these options will work, if we can modify them, and I'm going to make a decision on which one I'm going to go with going forward. So the O-ring still works very well. One of the added benefits is that it doesn't quite fit across the gap it's just a little small you can see there so it applies sideways pressure against the screw because of that even though i've not loctited these they're not tied down all the way i've not had a single screw even come loose yet um, with all four of all 16 of them they're all exactly where i left them in that very first video so that helps a lot and i i have to think that this pressure of this rubber has helped with that and I don't think you'll get that benefit with either one of these options. So the foam mounts are made for this size motor. You can see, hopefully you can see, they line up pretty perfectly, but there are a couple big problems with this. If you're new and you don't know how this works, this actually spins and that C clip rotates with the motor. So if the foam in the middle is in place, that's gonna be binding on this C-clip. It's probably just gonna break and come off and you're probably gonna destroy your motor. So that's not gonna work. I think it would be pretty easy and I think it would be acceptable if you just took a, an X-Acto knife and trimmed off these edges. So trim these off so it's just the outside layer. Leave as much as you can for additional structure. Once you attach that down, I think it would be okay. It's something you just have to try. I'm not gonna try it on the lizard though for one big reason. One, if you look at the spacing here and the size, they are super duper thick. They are double or more times as my O-ring. And with the O-ring, once I raise this, I am already clipping the frame with my blades. You can see little, there's little nicks taken out of them. Just little chunks taken out as they've hit and they've struck and have not caused me to crash but I have broken a couple blades so I actually would like something thinner that is simply not gonna work so these are a total no-go on the lizard they might be fine for other quadcopters I have like six micro quadcopters coming to compete with the lizard to see what the best all round is gonna be so I might end up reusing them later but they won't work for the lizard at all. Also, the screws that I have for them wouldn't be nearly tall enough for this. One other thing I do like about these though is they do have a sticky back. So if you take that off, you can, it makes it really easy to stick and leave it in place and keep it all lined up. It's a little thing, but it's kind of nice. But for the lizard at least, those are not going to work. So that leaves us with the silicone mount. The silicone mount isn't made for 1100 series motors. And I think we're gonna have a problem here as soon as I put it in place, there. I have lined it up as best as I can and it simply doesn't have enough room. There is a hole in the middle, which is good. It's just absolutely essential. But the spacing on here, these holes are not quite big enough. So the question is, do I cut out this piece right here, which will remove a lot of the structural integrity, or do I just move on? If you wanna know a secret, I just ordered a 3D printer, so we'll be seeing a review of that soon, and I'm just gonna be able to print my own TPU mounts in the future, but today I don't have that. The question is, will these work? To answer the width question, they are a little bit thinner than my rubber. So that will be good for the Lizard. I like the thickness, and it will give me a little extra clearance with the motors, which is, as I mentioned, a problem. Hopefully it's still squishy enough to remove and provide enough dampening though because with the rubber ring, I get quite a bit of dampening. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and cut these out. I ordered one of each color, so I have several to try with. I'm gonna cut these out and see if I can get them to work. So some people may wonder why I and half the people on YouTube, it seems like in this hobby, use these boards. And one of the reasons is it's a cutting board. 
you can actually use it to cut on and it's supposed to be non-marring. It's not completely non-marring. That's why I'm over here in a corner now so it doesn't show up in the main part we use on camera. But it also gives a high contrast and you can do things like solder above it and the solder will drip and stick to it and then just come right off. So you can just break that off without ruining your wooden table or whatever you've got. I've got an old drafting table. But it works out really well for this where I need to cut the piece out of here. I'm going to take a closer look at the spacing here. See what I need to do. Pretty much just need to go straight in on each side. I don't want to go any wider than I have to and I don't want to go the full width so I'm just going to take a really narrow strip out of the side of this. Probably be easier to do it this way. There. So the thing I'm happy about is, okay, I've cut that up, I've ruined its structural integrity, but it's actually still pretty good. It's going to hold shape, and I don't, I'm not too worried about it just falling apart after I cut those out. Actually, no, that's just about perfect because it's now on, and it's just applying a little bit of extra pressure to the screw to hopefully help keep it in place. So. I, that might be just right. Let's try putting this on and see what happens. So it does make it a little fiddly to get on, but uh, there I've got the first one, and I think what I'm going to have to do is tighten it down almost all the way, but not quite. Leave enough that then I can use the pressure of that one to put the rest of these in place. I, still, I went down a little too far. So now the question though is how far to tighten them down and the answer is I, I don't know <laughs> till it feels about right. I'm just going to, I've got an Allen wrench here and I'm kind of doing them until I just can't turn it anymore without holding on to the angled part. So if it turns down, turn it down. It seems like it'll be about right. So there it is. It is noticeably shorter than the other one. Um, I'll try the front ones next and I'll get all of those in then I'll, I'll give you a look at it. We'll see how it works. I can't feel any difference but honestly I can't feel the vibration. The first time I did this and I felt it I didn't think it, anything was going to happen either. So I'm not going to judge that. I do like that it's a little lower though. That's going to help a lot in the front. One down, three to go. Okay, three of them are on, but I want to show you the difference between what I did before with the O-rings and the new mounts that do hang over a little bit, but I don't think that'll cause any problem at all. So part of the problem with the O-rings that I've had is the blades will hit the frame here. There's nice little chunks out, and you can see each one of the blades has a little corner broken off where it's basically hit and then broken that tip off, and then it keeps going. So when I put new blades on, I will bend them down just a teeny tiny little bit and it's made it okay. But with the new one, this is not as tall. So I'm hoping, and I can already see, now the blades in their default settings travel just underneath there. So it gives me a little bit of extra clearance. I'm hoping it makes a big difference. Okay, new soft mounts are all installed. Final step is to go try it. <laughs> that went so badly, I didn't even get it recorded. After about 30 seconds, I could tell things were a disaster. So I came back and one of my motors was about ready to fall off. Two of the screws had come out of it already and it just wasn't going to work at all. So I immediately scrapped that and brought it back down. So now we're gonna learn about Loctite. One of the advantages I definitely learned is with the O-rings, because the O-ring was smaller than the circumference of what it had to go around, it was actually applying pressure to the sides of the screws and that torque was holding everything in place. Oh, there's another loose screw. I can just feel it. It's just ready to come out right there. So that pressure was keeping these from coming loose and it held in because I never used any Loctite with the O-rings. That worked out really well. But I want to try these, so in order to try these, I'm going to need some Loctite. Loctite 101. You need less than you think. I'm just going to put a little glob here and I'm just going to do these one at a time. I just had these basically finger tight and see that? 
That is too much. You do not need that much Loctite. You basically just need enough to hold the threads a little bit. So you get some on there and that's probably about right. And that's really all it takes. It's just enough to lock the thread in place just a little bit. So I'm just gonna do that with each one of these. Just kind of run it through there, get the extra off and then put it back in. And then tomorrow, we'll try again. Yeah, these were, these were not even close to gonna stay in place. Also another thing for Loctite that's stupid. The blue Loctite comes in a red bottle. Yes, I don't know why, there's probably reason. If Comment down below if you know why that works. Maybe somebody lock, works for Loctite, that'd be awesome. But anyway, for doing this, you wanna make sure you have blue Loctite. Do not buy red Loctite, which makes it confusing because the package is red. The package should be blue, but it says blue right here, uh, 242. Red Loctite is permanent. So if you use red Loctite, don't ever plan on getting the screws out. Now, with as little amount as I use here, it's probably still possible. It's, it's permanent, but you can still get it off. So in this case, it wouldn't be a total catastrophe, but man, would it be a whole lot harder and you don't need it. Just get the blue Loctite and you'll be fine. So the bottle says it sets in 20 minutes. It cures fully in 24 hours. I'm probably gonna give it about 12 hours. It's gonna be tomorrow morning before I have a chance to try it. And I think that'll probably be okay, but I guess we'll find out. See you then. All right, so let's try those soft mounts. I also did go ahead and replace the props. I tested it and I it flew terrible and I think the props were all bent. So it was the five blade props. I put on the gym fan four blades now. So let's see how it does now. It is really jelloey, really, really jelloey.